our guest of honour for the next oh, 60 minutes, I suppose, Paul Darrow. Guest of honour. Guest of honour. And, and, and translating into English for him, Gareth Thomas. <laughs> I would have worked, walked off if somebody had said his sidekick, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't yeah. do it then? No, no, no. no, no. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, vote for Serverland. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, uh, why has it gone quiet? <laughs> Guys, what are you doing? No. <laughs> it's your job breaking the props, isn't it? <laughs> it usually is. I think you just... That's it, it's working. <laughs> is it? You don't, you, do, you don't smoke it, Gareth. Oh. <laughs> don't panic, don't panic. Don't panic. The technical persons at this convention are par excellence, they have asked me to say. <laughs> I will say something, if I may, because we just discussed Please it. Do. We discussed it in all places, the bar. <laughs> Actually, amazing, I walked exactly. in there. Exactly. Well, Curiously enough, I walked into the bar and you weren't there. <laughs> he was in Sainsbury's trying to get money out of a machine. He wouldn't give him any. <laughs> um, what um, I'm going to say is what I'm going to say, which is uh, we've decided, and the committee have agreed, that we will auction ourselves, or we won't, somebody else will, so that you can have breakfast with us tomorrow. Uh, or one person can. Preferably female. Both uh, <laughs> for Serverland. Um, <laughs> and uh, as breakfast is included, they said this was a great idea, but as breakfast is included, you aren't going to get much out of it except the fact that you would have breakfast with myself or with um, uh, myself. <laughs> um, however, what we will do, he and I, We'll buy a bottle of champagne. So we have a champagne breakfast together. So we will auction that, and all the money will go to a very good cause, which is trying to save the committee of this convention going bankrupt. Uh, I panel, and you insisted on joining in. Ah, yes. Yes, this is true. Uh, uh, let me say that it's probably more marginally preferable for me to be sitting here than but the, the plans I actually had. However, <laughs> the word marginally might be rather more difficult to pronounce later in the evening. <laughs> Preferable would be impossible. <laughs> there, was a, there was an episode, actually, that... Uh, this is water. Yeah. Can, um, you guys get cameras of that? Oh, wonderful. There, there was an episode called Killer. We were actually discussing it earlier on. And we were filming in the studio uh, a short chap called Keating and I. Um, <laughs> there were very tricky scenes. So Gareth didn't think he'd be needed that evening. He had to be on standby. So he passed his time in, surprise, surprise, the bar. And Mr. Keating and I, professionals that we are, raced through it. Were. Were, all right. <laughs> and poor old Gareth was called onto the set, having had a few. And if you listen very carefully, he has to say the, the phrase space vehicle. And as we had a few beers, it came out... Space fickle. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my Welsh accent, is he? <laughs> I saw this shit on a car, but it's space fickle. Actually, if you listen very carefully, that's how it comes out. And it's because he'd had a few. And he was furious with us because we were so quick. I'd like to show you the voiceover work here. What's a concern to be doing? How dare you? <laughs> You know I have an arrangement with you at 9 o'clock tonight. Why do you want to bring it forward to 8? Okay? Right. There, there, go on. Yeah, sorry. I do a lot of voiceovers, thank God. And uh, my bank manager is very pleased. Um, yes, I do a lot of voiceovers for lots of businesses. I did one for Vodafone, uh, which is a telephone. And... Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, he was in it, yes. Well, my voice is on the end. Do you not recognize those dulcet tones? <laughs> oh, you switched it off. Oh. Uh, uh, you saw the glove and you switched it off. Yeah, I see. The glove is an actor called Dickon Ashworth, who was in an episode called... Lovely man. He's in the ad that I do the voice for. And I've also done uh, a fair amount for the BBC. Uh, the Third Rock from the Sun, I advertised, which is a new comedy series. Very funny. It's all about aliens. It's the role of Macbeth. Back cautiously. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, cautiously. Uh, it's a wonderful role. Unfortunately, I wasn't in a very good production of it. Uh, the money was limited and so on, and it does make an enormous difference. But it was a wonderful experience, of course, to have played that role for six months. I lost a lot of weight while I was doing it. <laughs> did you see it? Yes, I did, yeah. I was wonderful, wasn't I? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. What do you, what do you mean, crap? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you saw it as well, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody got a question for Gareth? Never mind. Uh, anyway, um... <laughs> oh, Servalandia! When you came to Doctor Who and Silent Silurians, and you were never a unit, do you ever think how, if your character hadn't been killed off a unit, well, I was in Doctor Who and the Silurians with the late lamented, uh, I'm sorry, he's gone now, bless him, John Pert. And that was many years ago, and I was a member of UNIT. And I was killed. <laughs> now, actually, I was quite relieved. Um, because, as you say, had I not been killed and they said stay on in unit, I might not then have been available for Blake 7. In which case, I would never have had the privilege and joy of working with um, Michael Keating. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, uh, no, I didn't mind being killed off. I was very, very young at the time. So, uh, <laughs> You look like that new Spanish dancer, you know, Cortez. And it looks... I wish I could say you look like Michael Thackley, but you don't. <laughs> oh, Jim, it was quick. Yeah. He'll slow down. Um, so, there you are. Yes. Anybody else like to ask a question? Do ask Gareth something, he'll feel so... No, he'll feel so... See, all the hands went down, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, most enjoyable time I've had. <laughs> there's, there's a very charming lady over there, just behind you for a moment, in, with uh, uh, black hair. Have you have a question for Gareth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to ask him? Gareth, do you regret having met Paul? <laughs> the lady uh, has asked the question: Does Gareth regret having met me, <laughs> Paul? I'll leave Mr. Thomas to answer that. Could take an hour. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> right, next question. Um, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be rude to me, not in public. Well, actually, he would. Did you have any Did I have the idea of writing the book on Avon? What ideas? Uh, <laughs> while I was playing Avon? No, I didn't. I was at a convention not dissimilar to this. And people said, uh, what was Avon like um, before he was Avon in the series? And I went to stay with Terry Nation, a uh, name with which you might be familiar, um, in Los Angeles. And I said, I've been asked this question. It might be a good idea if somebody wrote a book about it. And he said, well, I can't be bothered. <laughs> so I said, well, what was Avon like? He said, I don't know. <laughs> so he said, you write something. So I did. And it was published, and uh, doubtless you've read it. It was shortlisted for the Booker Prize, but unfortunately... <laughs> and while we're on the subject of books, I, uh, I have actually written another one. Uh, <laughs> to be published on March the 1st, 1997. It is called Queen the Eye, uh, which is linked to a game which is called Queen the Eye the Game, which is a computer game which is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. And it's going to be wonderful, and it's going to be released in March. And it's backed by Queen, the group, of whom you may have heard. The <laughs> rock and roll group. I'm going to write a book about Blake. No. 
Never. There's no market for it, love. No. Yeah, has Sharon get your film for you? Good, right. If Gareth wrote a book like what I did... Uh, you've got O-level English, have you left? Yeah. Yeah. The answer would be I got it right. Yeah. Well, I think he'd probably be a barfly. <laughs> a barfly? A barfly. Oh. Well, what else would he do? I don't know. Blake, I mean, um, the man's a prat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they knew that. Yes, yeah. I got that feeling. <laughs> um, you no, know, I mean, the, the man before that was just a look. Um, you know, he suddenly found his own métier. It's good, isn't it? It's not bad. Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> Plays outside Did left it? for Paris Saint Germain. Oh, that's, oh, that's mm. right, yeah. So, yeah so they're going to transfer into Huddersfield, aren't they? Um, <laughs> and afterwards, well, he was dead. <laughs> Did you hear that part? <laughs> you haven't got O level science then. <laughs> Spock did it. Yeah, well, let's let him Nemo, he can do anything. No, seriously, I, don't, I, I think Blake found his metier at that particular moment, and that was it. I don't think he was anything special before that. Um, he was a puff. Uh, <laughs> well, he might have been, who knows? A vote for Sutherland. Absolutely. <laughs> and she, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I don't think uh, he came from nowhere. I mean, as so many people in times of crisis do. And that was Blake. He just suddenly appeared and was the right person at the right time, the right moment. And then Darrow came along. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an empty glass here, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, that, that could take some time then. Yeah, um, yes, right, now we can talk. Ah, you'd like to uh, ask a question? Yes. How did you get involved in working with Queen on the CD-ROM, which then turned into the novel? Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> you said you would. How much did you pay uh, you? How did I get... I've been involved with Queen, the, the group. What happened actually was that I played uh, golf. Uh, I still do. And uh, there was an advertising guy, I'll cut a long story short, there, and I did an after-dinner speech, which apparently was quite successful. He now is the managing director of a company which is doing a game for Queen, which is called Queen the Eye, the game, which is absolutely, it's impossible to describe. It's the state of the art. It's going to be wonderful. And he said, would I go in and do some recording for it? So I did. And he said, can you do all these voices for us? And I said, well, I might find the women a bit tricky. <laughs> so they said, did I know any women? <laughs> and I said, I know Jacqueline Pierce. And they said, fine. So uh, Jackie came up and played the Baroness, who is the queen of outer space. I mean, who else would you cast? <laughs> <laughs> so Jackie did that. And then my wife Janet was in it. And Peter Tudlin was in it. And they said, can we get Gareth Thomas? I said, you don't want him. And uh, <laughs> uh, we would have hopefully had Gareth, but there wasn't. Uh, but there you are. So then we did all that. And then um, uh, they were going to have a book written, which was a prequel to the game. And they said, would I write it? Because I'd written Avon, a terrible aspect, a classic. <laughs> and so I wrote it. And they liked it. And they're publishing it. And it's all coming out on March the 1st. The game, the making of the game, a cartoon. The book, everything. It's going to cost you, everything all at once, it's going to cost you a fortune to buy it. <laughs> but it'll be worth every penny. It is amazing, state-of-the-art stuff. I play your character in Time Lash as a humpback, but you weren't allowed You to... heard that I was going to play my character in Time Lash, which was in a program, um, what's it called? The Doctor Who. <laughs> um, uh, with a hump. Yes, I was. But they wouldn't let, I wanted to play it like Richard III, you see. But I got the long wig and the limp. But, but don't uh, see Macbeth. <laughs> Come back, Stephen Pacey, all this <laughs> um, Yes, I did, but they got cross with me. In fact, the producer, whose name is John Nathan Turner, came in and said, some people 
I won't name names, are not taking their parts seriously. And Tracy Ward, uh, Tracy Louise, who is Rachel Ward's sister, who's now the Marchioness of something, turned around and said, you mean Paul, don't you? <laughs> and he said, yes. Um, so there you are. But, but then when you get a cobra coming on the screen, they say, could you play this very sincerely? Well, not really, can you? <laughs> and there's some poor actor in a cobra hat going, <laughs> hello, <laughs> and you think, come off it, love, you know. So um, I didn't take it too seriously, no. But he was going to be with the hump. But the only people who got the hump were them. But he's forgiven me, <laughs> J&T, he's forgiven me. Actually, I thought it was rather good, didn't it? <laughs> but you thought that was crap as well, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Did you like anything I've done? No. There's a gentleman over here, earlier. Yeah. Yes, sir. Would I be interested in doing a film version of Blake 7? Would we consider doing a film version of Blake 7? No, yes. yes. Have you got the money? <laughs> <laughs> it was mooted. It was mooted. Um, but the BBC ran out of money. Why, we never know. <clears throat> Doctor Who? Doctor what? Doctor Who? Um, we went to Betchley Quarry. We finally got to Worthing. Doctor Who managed to get to Paris and Tenerife. Doctor Who had films made. Blake Seven never did. And I think they kept on saying they ran out of money. The thing was that Blake Seven was ephemeral. It actually stopped. It didn't carry on. <laughs> Same thing, isn't it, really? Um, <laughs> and so they couldn't make a film afterwards because we're all dead. I'm not. You want a bet? In fact, Jackie no, was not convinced. Are you the only one? Yes. Jackie was convinced. Well, she's alive as well. She was convinced that a new series was coming out called Avon and Die. <laughs> How surprising, I thought it would have been I and Avon. <laughs> oh, could have been, couldn't it? Uh, an Orax around somewhere. Uh, oh, yes, mm. and Tudders. Oh, yes, mm. Tudders. Tudders could, Tudders could actually play the entire thing. <laughs> no need us, I mean, you know. I warn you now, he's coming tomorrow. He's going to be here tomorrow. He was the best paid actor in the BBC. He, he did all the voices. Once. Yeah, all the voices. Three, three different voices, three different parts, three different fees. Came in once a fortnight and did four episodes. Yeah. One day got paid about 12 fees. <laughs> lovely man, lovely man. Drink, didn't you? <laughs> oh, yes, he did buy me a drink once, yes. <laughs> Any more questions? I must wake up. What? Look at that sea of hands. Oh, oh. Oh, there's a silly question for me, apparently. Yeah. Another one. <laughs> yes, when I beam down to a planet. He didn't. How did I resist saying Avon calling? <laughs> <laughs> he did frequently. You're a Serverland supporter, aren't you? <laughs> I, know, I don't know. I know somebody wanted to say at one particular point there was an episode called. Um, hold the phone here. Star Drive. Star Drive. It was called. They had funny hair tots. And uh, at the end of it, there was a Dr. Paxton. Do any of you remember her? Yeah. Lovely yeah. actress called Barbara Shelley. And the line at the end, I had her blown away or something. And somebody said, what about the doctor? And they wanted me to say, Doctor Who. <laughs> and Glynis Barber was very anxious that I said that. She just to annoy her, I didn't. <laughs> oh, somebody else wants to say something. Yeah, his lunch. Oh, good, because I haven't. <laughs> I'm going to start crying in a minute. Does anybody want to ask Gareth a question? No. Oh, they come down again. Yes. <laughs> you might go. You want a serious question? On behalf of your friend? You're not married to her? No. It would be impossible. Do I have Josette Simon's telephone number? At least I do, actually. <laughs> but I ain't going to give it to you, brother. But this is the serious question. Yes? So you love classic films. Um, I love classic films, films, yes. Given that your performances are excellent, I'll just repeat this. Sorry, he's got to say that bit twice. 
the gentleman says, giving my performances are always excellent, yes. Nice voice, good bone being very still, <laughs> I'm sorry, a nice think, voice. Well, I think this is a question for me, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, and have good bone structure, and, well, you want to marry me or something? No, no, no. Am I basing myself <laughs> on Marlena Dietrich? <laughs> not a bad idea, actually. Uh, she was wonderful. I'm a big fan. I mean, she was terrific. She had lots of lifts, you know. I haven't had anything done to me. I, what you we see noticed. is what you get. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Or not. That's the case <laughs> I did. Right. No, no, I'm not actually basing myself on her, but it's not a bad idea. And uh, thank you, because she was a very glamorous person. And I'm sure you feel the same about me. <laughs> right. Colin. On Blake 7. On Blake 7. No, because Colin Baker had been in Blake 7 prior to my going into Doctor Who. So he had trouble with us. <laughs> uh, and then when we went into Doctor Who, uh, or I went into Doctor Who, uh, no, he was a good chap, Colin. Oh, do stop crying, Colin! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but the McGann boys got the part, love. <laughs> Somebody's told him we're on Sky tomorrow morning. <laughs> so. The vo my voice sounds different to you than the voice you heard from Avon. Well, I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes, yes. Sometimes you do, you know, for the character. You're getting cross with somebody. You don't say, do stop doing that. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and then you won't say, all right. We're going to wait this plan act like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Having read the script, which was written underneath. <laughs> and I go, question it. <laughs> He thought about laughing. <laughs> so we'd have to reshoot it. <coughs> so, um, having said that, yes, go ahead. It was marginally funnier uh, when you used to do bogey. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, so let me do. This is the uh, finest impersonation of bogey I've ever heard. So let me do bogey. Uh, there was an episode, I can't remember what the episode was called now. And I was up on the um, flight deck, and uh, the girl, the blonde girl, you know, the one who was always late for weddings, uh, used to fly the ship. <laughs> Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> Jenna. No. Sally. She was down, I think it was called the Keeper or something like that. Anyway, I was, I was left in charge of the ship. And the director said to me, which was a big mistake, he said, what I want you to do, he said, is, here are some ball bearings here. I want you to play with those. <laughs> and everybody said, oh, this is a terrible mistake. You should never <laughs> tell Paul to do that. And I was going around the flag deck going, somebody's taking the strawberries. <laughs> Wait till Blake gets back. <laughs> and the director looks at me as if I was an idiot, which I probably was. Uh, but it's there, I actually do use them. Mm. Wonderful, I love doing that. Do you remember that day, we, we, we had a day once where we, would, we decided that we would play everybody because um, we got bored. And it was when David Gann Jackson was worrying about his character, I remember. He was worried about his character. And he was having a chat with the director and we got bored. So we did it uh, like film stars, you know, like Frank Sinatra and the, the Rat Pack. And Orac was, um, no, not Orac, Zen, was Dean Martin. <laughs> so that it was set a course for wherever. And it's time you're ready, pal. We had a lot of fun, didn't we? Yes. And uh, I think uh, David wanted to be one and Dean Tripp, didn't he? I think yes. so, yes. But Unfortunately, his, his girth um, <coughs> precluded that. Precluded that, yes. Yes, quite. And his limiter as well. Right. So. It's not going to move that. There's a gentleman, is it a gentleman? Because he said it's dark. It is a man. Oh, right. Okay. If there was a Blake 7 film, who would you like to direct it? Oh. Leo Lorimer. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, seriously, that's a good, good question. Because, yeah. I mean, it would be a very different film, depending on the director, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, it would have to be somebody, I suppose, like Scorsese. <laughs> very nice. 
Jonathan Demi? Huh? Yeah. Silence of the Blakes. <laughs> Hello? I mean... Actually, Hopkins only did that because he was dribbling when they started. And they said, keep it in, keep it in, it's great. So I had Blake's liver last night. With some fava beans and a nice bottle of candy. I'm having dinner with an old friend. I tell you something, you, you got my liver, you'd be in deep trouble. <laughs> yes, I... I had the heroes of appalling efflorescence of many coloured blossoms. Yes. And we never get it on, it'd be banned. Yeah. It wouldn't be science fiction, it'd be pulp fiction, wouldn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Wouldn't be great. This gentleman down here. John Travolta could play um, great. Villa. Great, how dare you? Oh. <laughs> That'd be good casting, wouldn't it? John Travolta as Villa. And who would you cast as Blake? <laughs> uh, if you couldn't have Gareth. Yeah. Who? Schwarzenegger is playing. <laughs> well, I got news for you. Danny DeVito's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. Den Cruise. Dennis Hopper is at Tom Cruise. My <laughs> kind. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Hopper is Avon. Yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it? And who would you have as the girls? Harvey Keitel. Harvey, <laughs> Harvey Keitel is the girls. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Harvey would be pleased to hear that. Yeah. Very good, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'd have to be Demi Moore, wouldn't it? As Callie. Yeah, Demi as Callie. And Michelle Pfeiffer as anything. <laughs> and the late Betty Davis as Silverland. <laughs> Very good. Fasten your seatbelts room for a bumpy ride. Yeah. Why are there any Knights of God's fan clubs, t-shirts, conventions? Because as our friend down here will tell you, it was crap. <laughs> Oh, it's a very good question. I've no idea. Uh, it's not to us to say there will be fan clubs, there will be whatever. Uh, I think it was actually, I think Knights of God was quite a good series. Uh, again, it was finite. I think I'm right in saying it was <coughs> Channel 4, I think. Which, when it was made, which is, ooh, nearly 10 years ago now, was very much a minority channel. channel. Whereas BBC, of course, is still the major channel. And so there are an enormous number more viewers watching that than there are watching Channel 4, were watching Channel 4. Um, why particularly Knights of God didn't take off, I don't know. I mean, it's a great show to do, it's great fun. It's the last show Pat Trout never did. Um, and it, it was good fun, but I just say, I don't know. It's up to you if, if something becomes popular or not. I was up at Yorkshire TV and um, somebody in the bar said, would you like to be in Emmerdale Farm? And I said, well, yes, I suppose so. And they said, well, we... There's this young girl in it, very pretty girl. Long. Have you seen Emmerdale Farm, any of you? Oh. Well, anyway, she's very pretty. And they said, you're her boyfriend. And he, living, was it? She has to have a much older boyfriend. And I thought, oh, charming. Um, <laughs> anyway, I played this part. And the curious thing was, I did four weeks as her boyfriend. I left the series. Two weeks later, she became a lesbian. Uh, <laughs> I thought, there's something wrong here. Stop there, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think I'll be going back, no. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Having worked with Queen, have I got me plans to be the new Freddie Mercury? At that one? age? It's only one, only one Freddie Mercury. Love. Yes, true. I'm afraid, sadly. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, the lovely life. <laughs> Actually, go back to that performance I did in Macbeth. Actually, uh, in Preston, Preston, which is a town in the north. If you go up, if you're not familiar with it, if you go up the M1 and then the M6, you'll see a sign saying, clean toilets ahead. And a couple of Irishmen cleaned 26 before they actually got to Preston. Uh, anyway, um, it's up there. Oh, I wouldn't give this spot to a leopard. Um, I liked it. It's up there, and I performed Macbeth in Preston, and the local critic said, Mr. Darrow plays Macbeth like Freddie Mercury giving a farewell concert. <laughs> Make what you will of that. I'd <laughs> love to have been a rock star, though, wouldn't you? Well, Not you'd be a meatloaf, yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Would we like to make any comments on the recent series of Neverwhere? No, but, but you do have here, sitting in the front row, the makeup lady who actually did the whole of Neverwhere. 
I've never seen it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, who, who, um, who, who spoke, who asked? Right, I'm sorry, what's your... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, could you stand up so I can see you? All right, now, what did you ask? Ask me again. Sorry, what's your name? Um, I don't know my name, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's going to be one of those questions. He's not going to tell me his name either. Yeah, what was the question? Uh, just there was any comments on anyway. What sort of comments would you like? <laughs> I can do nice comments. I can do critical comments. I can tell you the truth. Um, I can tell you a lot of things. What would you like to know? I'm glad to talk about it. Right, I disappeared down a hole in the ground on the 2nd of January, and I emerged uh, two days after Easter in April, and during that time, I had 40 of the cardboard badges. You know the ones you buy in the station and you put safety pen behind and you stick them on? Well, just plain badges. Every day I had a new badge. The first one started with, never slept. Then it went into never clean, never told, uh, and, and so progressed through the series. And when Neil Gaiman um, did an interview at the end of the videos, which uh, they're out in a box set and he's, he's got a bit, uh, an interview at the end, and he, he actually says, and I'd like to thank the crew, and he goes through all those badges, and I thought, He's thanked me about 40 times because they were, all my, they were all my names. But if there are any questions about Neverwhere, I'd be glad to talk about it. But I think really this is the guy's panel. Um, but if you do want to talk to me about it, I'm usually in the bar or something like that. Is there a second series? Um, I'll tell you the exact situation we're in at the moment. It, the whole of the series has gone out, all six episodes. Four of the major actors, maybe five, I'm not sure, have got an option on their contract which ends on Christmas Day. So the BBC have got until Christmas Day to tell us whether we've got a second series or not. And basically, it will depend on the people who watched it. If you liked it, it's exactly what Gareth was saying earlier on about Knights of God, maybe not enough people liked it, you never know. If enough people liked Neverwhere, we'll get a second series. And if we do, we're going to be making it between April and July of next year. So you honestly know as much as I do. I have got my fingers crossed, like everybody else who enjoyed the series. And the first one was made for 1.8 million. We needed five. We could have done it adequately on three. On 1.8 million, we had to cut a lot of the scenes. Also, it would have been nice to have it in 50-minute slots, not 30-minute slots. And I think if we sell it abroad, which is going to be very difficult to sell six 30-minute programs, it's a, it's a difficult thing. Americans, for instance, don't want anything as small as that. I think if the BBC was sensible, they would probably re-edit it into three one-hours. Yes, exactly, that's the trouble. If, if they, well, if, yes, if they could edit it down so they've got a three-hour mini-series, like three one-hours, or as you say, two and a half, I think they could sell it to America. Now, if they sell it to the USA, there is a huge Neil Gaiman market there. Lots of people know his work. And I think we really would stand a chance once they knew that the rest of the world wanted it as well. Because obviously the BBC will depend on sales of their programs abroad as much as anything else. And they've really got plumpers. I mean, we made it for nothing. We kept corners all over the place. So the answer to your question is, my comment is, if you enjoyed it, please let the BBC know. <laughs> because if they know people want it, then we'll get a second series. 1.8 million? Yes. Same price as Blake 7. We did 13 episodes for that. <laughs> yes, but it was 20 years ago. <laughs> Yeah. You built a refrigerator, a refrigerator, the liberator. Yes. <laughs> what was it you had water? But was it water? Uh, no, I'm, a, I'm a Chicago. <laughs> I'm a big Bears fan. Yeah. Um, yes, he built. Uh, what's it for less than that? Mm -hmm. Talk about. She was talking about the BBC. It, it's not a joke. It is actually Careful. true. One of the biggest disasters the BBC ever did was Foresight Saga. One of the most popular programmes ever shown on BBC. And BBC had the facility, the capacity. They decided not to spend the money and do it in colour. They did it in black and white. That meant nobody else in the world was vaguely interested. 
They sold it to America for tuppence. I mean, whatever, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. They could have made a fortune, but they will not invest. They did it in black and white. And that was one of their biggest disasters ever, apart from Blake Seven. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, no, she is absolutely right. You, you have to invest. That is the problem with the entire entertainment industry in this country. Did we see the Doctor Who film? I can answer that. Well, very on, you mean the no. Paul McGann one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Because you told me it was crap. I... <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to say, careful. To whom was, was that question asked? <laughs> yes. Paul, I, I know Paul uh, and his brothers, and uh, you don't get on the wrong side of them, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. That was his own wig. That's his own hair. Yes. Transplant. Yes, sir. Given that there are many new TV channels popping up all the time and they need material to show, and they're, they're raking the archives. Is there anything you'd rather was left in the archives? The gentleman says that as there's so much television time now becoming available with cable and satellite and so on, uh, they'll be raking up lots of old shows. Are there any that we would prefer not to be seen? Well, Gareth, uh, you have Makes a lot fun. of those, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Star Maidens. I thought you, I thought that was the... <laughs> I thought that was Gareth's finest performance in Star Maidens. Uh, that's why I decided to become an actor. I saw him in Star Maidens, and I thought, if he can get away with it, I can. Do, I mean, do, well, forget Star Maidens. Well, not forget Star Maidens. Um, do you watch a lot of television other than science fiction? Yes. Yeah. Yes. When Star Maidens came up, BBC used to, in the olden days, they didn't anymore, do what they call a pilot series. And they do a, a, a one show of... A particular thing, and if it worked well, they'd go into a series of it. And I was asked to do two at once, I mean, one after the other. And uh, I was desperate for money at the time, aren't we all, even now? And uh, my agent phoned up and said, I've been on the phone to so and so, and they want to do a series called Star Maidens. It's six episodes, half hour, I think they're half hour. It's a multinational thing with German actors and French actors and whatever. They want you as one of the leading regulars. Um, you know, what do you think about it? And I said, well, I've got these two things possibly as well. And they said, well, it would mean you can't do either of those two things because it would clash in terms of time. I said, well, um, all right, I don't mind losing one of the BBC things, but the other one I'm not too happy about. It's quite interesting. So what money are they offering? And I can't remember what it was, but let's just uh, take a figure out at the end, say so they're offering 10,000 for the five episodes. I said, fine. Okay, I'll do it, because it's only six weeks, and I can get out and maybe do another show. So I turned down a thing called Poldark. <laughs> 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 Which I think would have earned me a lot more money, and, uh, however. And so Star Maidens is a <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Big mistake, Blake. Big mistake. <laughs> Wrong game. Yes. Oh dear, that's awful. I didn't know that. Mm, that's terrible, because Star Maidens really was crap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, you're right, you're right, it really was crap. All I can remember about that thing was splitting my trousers, trying to jump over a oh, trampoline or something. Oh, and, and falling into the tent, diving into the river. And uh, I, I'm not a particularly good swimmer, but I can swim. So they said, OK, fine, we've got a stunt girl in the boat. And you're, I had supposedly, as, as in Star Maidens, some supernatural powers, I don't know what, I can't remember. I had to dive in, swim out of the boat, and stop this boat going over the weir. So I said, oh, well, okay, fine, yes, as long as you've got, you know, the ropes on a, I mean, the, the, the boat's on a bit of rope held by the prop men down the river here, and so that's not going to go far, and I'll just dive in, swim out to it, and we'll do the scene. Fine. Two cameras, one up on the bridge, one down below the bridge as we come over the weir. Great. So, fine, turn over, and action! And I come right in, just before I dive in, there's another splash. I think nothing more of it. I dive in, get out to the boat, and the whole damn thing does go over the weir. It's not supposed to. What had happened to Splash was the prop man letting go of the rope. <laughs> and the boat and myself and the stunt woman went over the weir. Now, at the bottom of a weir, the water does that. And I'm not a particularly strong swimmer. <clears throat> and my stunt double dived in and literally saved my life. He hit the bottom, grabbed hold of me, and just pushed up. We got to the top, and the director said, Freddie Francis, the director, a very good director, 
uh, said, that was great. I'm awfully sorry about that, Gareth. I said, so bloody high. <laughs> uh, however, I'm still breathing. And he said, okay, we got on that camera. Okay. And literally, this old camera fellow turned and said, ready when you are, Mr. Francis. He hadn't even turned over. Yeah. Just, and they'll never let Brian Croucher hold that rope again. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said it should have been Stevie Grife, but there you go. <laughs> Did you ask something else? No, it was crap. <laughs> Puff. <laughs> Did you play draft? <laughs> um, that was your favourite? Yeah. The last episode? Yes, it was one of mine as well. Um, actually, uh, in all seriousness, Chris Boucher and the writers, uh, Terry and so on, did a pretty marvellous job. They were all very good episodes in many ways. There were one, two duff ones, and I'm sure you all have your favourites or unfavourites. My least favourite was called Harvest of Chiron. Very unpleasant. So I thought the least I have to do with this, the better. And there is a scene, though, where I do come charging in and I slip. And you can, no, no, I slipped. And, you know, it's one of those, if you try to be really macho, I'll do it for you if you like. <laughs> okay, hold, hold it. <laughs> you left it in. <laughs> It's great when he, it, sometimes a, a director will allow you to do that deliberately. Going, going up a flight of steps, you trip. And it's great fun, there's somebody waving a hand back there again as well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember any of them. Um, no, I really can't remember, I can't even remember the story. All I remember was a fellow called Pierre Brice, who was a French... Oh, he was um, Shatterhand or whatever. Was he? Sorry? <laughs> He played Winner too, that's right. Oh, that's right, yes, and that's right, yes. Stuart Granger was old thingy. The only thing Shut I remember, hand. The only thing I remember yeah. about Star Maidens was we had a German director who could speak virtually no English on one of the episodes. And the guest star on that particular episode was a lovely, lovely Scottish actor called Ronnie Fraser, who taught me to drink. Um, <laughs> he likes a jar, <clears throat> probably a lot more than I do. And uh, come the, the end of this episode, we're filming a scene, and Ronnie Fraser has to bring out this great big massive gun thing. And there was no script. And the director said, oh, we must have something to say here. Uh, say no something to say. Say something, will you? So Ronnie Fraser looks at me, and I look at him, and I think, oh, God, no, don't, Ronnie. <laughs> and we come to the scene, they turn over an act, and we do the scene. Ronnie brings out this great big sort of, yes. And he points it at me and he says, looks at me straight in the eye and says, this will bring tears to your eyes on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> and the director kept it because he didn't know what he was talking about. 